Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the channel. My name is Michael. I'm here today for both Yodatech.com and ClubLexus.com. Today we have the 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser Heritage Edition, which is a special edition model, comes with lots of standard features, which we'll get into in just a second. But the reason why we're reviewing this one so late is one, that's when Toyota offered it to us, but more importantly, the 2021 model should be effectively basically the same. So if you're looking at a 2020 or 2021 model, this review should apply to you. So what we're gonna do in today's review is first I'm gonna go over the window sticker and then we're gonna go take it for a drive and talk about my experiences. So, Heritage Edition, this one stickers at $89,239 with delivery fee and a $299 glass breakage sensor. That is the only option on this particular model. Otherwise, the Heritage Edition includes 18-inch BBS alloy wheels. The leather seats have this nice uh, perforated leather. They're heated and cooled. There's a Heritage Edition grille out front. There's a 5.7 liter V8 engine under the hood made it to an eight speed automatic transmission. That's 381 horsepower, 401 foot pounds of torque. There's a full time four wheel drive locking limited slip differential, kinetic dynamic suspension system, multi train select. So hill start assist, a crawl mode, you know, different modes for different off roading techniques that you're going to need. In terms of safety, there's 10 airbags trailer sway control, automatic high beam, pedestrian warning systems, cruise control, lane departure warning system. That works pretty well. Also the, the blind spot monitoring out back, that works extremely well. We tested that out in a parking lot. Rear parking assist, you can press the button here on the dash. You can see behind you while you're backing up like all cars have, but this also has a front camera for parking or crawling and going over stuff like that. Outside, you're gonna find LED headlights and fog lamps, rain sensing, windshield wipers, and uh, windshield wiper de-icer. Oh, and of course, a power moonroof. Uh, and last but not least, we've got the premium audio system with integration. That's 14 JBL speakers, a heated second row on the outside seats. We've got heated and cooled leathers, front captain's chairs, 10-way uh, power in the driver's seat, eight-way power in the front passenger seat, and a four-zone climate control. So I think that's it for features. Let's go for a drive. Like any big tall SUV, the great thing about having a Toyota Land Cruiser is of course this feeling of sitting up so high. Outside of maybe the bigger Fords and Chevys, there's, n and of course, you know, like the actual trailer trucks and stuff, there's nothing bigger on the road the driving around the Land Cruiser it gives you a great POV for city commuting, highway driving, all those things you can really see all around you. Although I will say when you're trying to pass the um, the pillar behind the driver's seat is a bit of a blind spot for even people at different heights. So I didn't really enjoy that. But overall, uh, really nice to drive around town, which surprised me. Some SUVs, like uh, for example, we recently just had the Ford Expedition King Ranch Max. And uh, that was interesting to drive because it drove really, really smooth on the road, but then the moment uh, you wanted to turn it in a faster corner, it kind of swayed really, really heavily. And in the case of um, in the case of this car, it's always got this plush, kind of cushy, bouncy off-road suspension, and that might sound bad off the off the top while describing it, but I really, really like it. It soaks up the bumps. You don't have to slow down for even like speed bumps in this thing. It just dives over them. It's like Baja 1000, but you know, on your local neighborhood road. But because it's so bouncy and kind of sway, the car lets you know way in advance before you could get into trouble. So I love driving this thing around. In fact, I love the whole truck. I really recommend it. Uh, that's kind of the, the quick takeaway from this review is that this is a fantastic truck. It's got the looks of the Heritage Edition, the classic Land Rover look. Obviously this truck has not been updated very much in the last few years, but it's still a joy to drive and this one looks the part. Now, 
The downside to that is that when you get the Heritage Edition, it deletes a few things. You don't get an, a third row seat, you can option up for that, and you delete the running board. So it is harder for shorter folks to climb up into the cabin, which is a bit of a bummer. You know, it's, it's always weird to me. Obviously the point of the Heritage Edition is that you're gonna you know, take this thing off-roading, it's gonna be the, the badass one, right? But of course, the, you know, the problem with that is, um, is that you lose amenities even though you're paying a little bit more for this one. Still, I think it's a really, really great truck. Obviously the reliability, you're buying a Toyota, this thing is gonna last forever, which is what makes these cars so valuable in the used market, so you lose less in depreciation over your ownership period. I also find the cabin supremely comfortable. You've got these plush leather seats in the all around. These ones are ventilated for the summers, which is great here in Los Angeles. Heated for the winters, heated steering wheel as well is included. It's just a very, very nice truck to drive around. Uh, now, in terms of performance, getting on the highway and those types of things, this engine does a nice job. The truck weighs just uh, about 5,850 pounds, I think it is. So this engine does a nice job of getting it up to speed, but it's not quite as peppy and as fast as uh, some of the other ones that are available now. Again, that, that Ford EcoBoost is a little faster. All right, moving on. So the one of the nice features that the Heritage Edition comes with, it's this uh, roof rack on top of the truck, and it's great for, again, supplies for off-roading, family trips and all that sort of stuff. The only downside to it is that if you don't have anything into it, or if you do a lot of highway traveling, I would suggest taking it off. There's just locking mechanisms it comes right off because it is a little bit noisy on the highway. Okay, going on to the interior features. I love the layout. It looks really good. It looks a lot better than, you know, the 2020 F-150s and those older generations. You know, bigger screen, nice layout. It's certainly not as luxurious as you're gonna get with the various Lexus models, of course. This doesn't, you know, there's some cheaper plastics on the touch surfaces and padded areas. It's not bad, but it's not necessarily worthy of a $90,000 uh, price tag. But the one thing that's missing in terms of amenities is that unlike a lot of modern trucks, in addition to the Apple CarPlay and that nonsense up front, there's not many power outlets and USB adapters and that sort of stuff. There's a 12 volt in the second row in its little console where they control the their heated seats and their climate. And there's a full 110 volt in the actual back of the truck. And there's a USB and an input jack here. But if you've driven one of the American trucks lately, they are powered up for days. That said, really nice to drive around in. And I absolutely love this radio. I'm a bit of an auto audiophile myself. And with a little bit of tinkering, this thing sounds terrific with your Bluetooth radio, XM radio, local radio stations, HD radio. It's absolutely great love 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 how this thing sounds but the menu interface for the radio system including the apps and navigation stuff that you know there's no Apple CarPlay with this no Android Auto it is uh, kind of terrible uh, it's very old it's very laggy moving around trying to search enter destination points I don't understand why in a $90,000 truck you can't get a radio that is as good as you know a, a Sony radio that you can get for 500 bucks from Crutchfield or Amazon or whatever. You know, that's a that's a big disappointment for a car so nice because it's it's so almost perfect. Also, if you are someone that's concerned with fuel economy, do not buy this truck. It's very heavy and it's peppy and it just sucks down the gas mileage. If you're cruising on the highway at 70, 80 miles an hour, you can you know you watch the the fuel level dive down as you're driving. I mean, gosh, overall guys, it's really, really hard to find something to complain about with the Land Cruiser. Now, the one thing I will say is that we meant to take this thing off road, but because of the ongoing lockdown and restrictions and stuff, uh, the local places to me were not open, unfortunately, so I didn't get to take it off. But like I said, this thing soaks up speed bumps and road cracks and everything. It is an absolute joy to drive. It has a decent performer. It has the reliability factor. It's an awesome looking badass truck. Everybody comes up to it, you know, because it's got the classic Land Rover look, but it's got these, it looks like you put it together in the aftermarket. It looks like you built this truck 
And this is from the factory with the bumper to bumper warranty and, and all those things that come when you're buying a new Toyota. Highly, highly, highly recommend this truck if you can afford it as is. You know, $90,000 is obviously a lot to pay for a new truck, but I, you know, and I think that if you want space, you should step up to the Sequoia. So this isn't quite as uh, long as the Sequoia or the Suburban or the Tahoe Expedition, like those kind of longer American trucks or the, or the other Toyota truck. But for a family of four, this is an awesome truck. Uh, absolutely love it. So if you could afford this one and you don't need more space, and you don't mind the gas mileage, highly recommend you pick up a 2020 or 2021 Toyota Land Cruiser Heritage Edition. But even better, if you keep your eyes out, if you happen to be watching this in a few years on YouTube or wherever, absolutely pick up one of these trucks, you know, with 50, 75, 100,000 miles on it. This is an awesome, awesome truck. I love it. Uh, can't say enough nice things about this truck. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all are well and safe. Please like, subscribe, smash the thumbs up, and smash things. I don't know. People, they tell me this. I have to say that you're supposed to smash things. I have a marketing person who tells me what to do. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and again, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Cheers.